how Anthony Rizzo has been grinding and you were happy for him to come through in that situation. How pleased are you to see him drive a ball the way he did out to the bleachers? Yeah, yeah, really good. And, uh, you know, that was kind of the one that really, really got us rolling. Um, kind of broke it open a little bit there. And um, to see him really get into one like that uh, <clears throat> was definitely good. And, you know, back-to-back -back days of getting some really meaningful results at the plate is hopefully something that continues to spur him on. And then with a big lead, you're able to bring in Manny Banuelos. What is that moment like for you guys in the clubhouse to see him finally make that Yankee debut? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, you know, it was emotional in there. Um, you know, if obviously most of you are aware of his story to be here, um, he's just he's just such a such a great dude, and to to see him realize this, uh, you know, later than than expected, but never giving up and never losing sight of this being what he wanted to do and where he wanted to do it. Um, you know, to see guys, to see people persevere uh, through a lot of different things is uh, special to witness that. Lindsay and Eric. Aaron, did you have a, maybe a pitch target in mind for how long you would let Garrett go if, if things continued in the seventh? No. <laughs> um, and then when, when he signed, there was a lot of pressure on him, you know, to kind of anchor the rotation and whatnot. Do you think that the overall success of the rotation around him has maybe taken some of that pressure off him, or do you think that it's well, um, benefited him? Um, look, I, I think any time you're a close-knit group like those guys are and you're challenging each other and learning from one another, I think that that environment is, is one that, you have a better chance to thrive in. So I think that's happening. But, you know, he's Garrett Cole. He's always going to have those expectations and whatnot that kind of follows him all the time. Um, but, you know, I've, I've felt like really since, since spring training and, and, again, even early in the season, when he didn't get results those first couple, I, I felt like his stuff was in a really good place. And, and, and we're seeing that uh, on a really consistent basis right now. Eric, just to follow up on, on Lindsay's question, can you envision a scenario if he had the perfect game still going where you would have asked him for the ball? No. Um, no. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, if we're into a dangerous 140-50, like, it's hard to imagine him having a perfect game up, up in those kind of numbers. But, um, you know, I, you know, I certainly would have been inclined to, you know, let him chase history. And then uh, the Carpenter's bunt mm -hmm. with two outs that kind of started that. Uh, yeah, right. Was, uh... Great execution. You know, I, th I don't think they believed him the first time or, or just with two outs, you know, he, or he, he showed bunt and it was a ball and they, you know, stayed in the shift. And I just think with two outs in his power presence, I, I think they just figured we'll, we'll let him have that. He executes, and then it, it turns into, obviously, a huge inning for us where that's the inning we broke it open, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Izzy follows that up. Trevino, you know, follows that up and then leads to <clears> – <throat> did that then lead to Rizzo? I'm, no? Okay, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was just, just kind of a winning play.